Feature Friday. The freshest. <gasps> okay, this is really interesting. So we had been introduced to this video originally in one of the live streams last Friday, actually. We stream uh, every Friday. That's right, from around 12 to like about 6, 6, 6 7 p.m. Uh, UK longer. time. Yeah, we keep going later and later. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys were really adamant that we check this out. And I think we saw about like a minute or maybe less of the beginning. Uh, well, I'm uh, familiar with Mohini. Uh, she's a really, really good bass, uh, bassist uh, from India. Mm -hmm. I had no idea she had come out of Berkeley. Um, uh, was I was just familiar with her because, uh, I don't know, just sort of one of those musicians you come across. Yes. Um, and um, well, you do you do follow the jazz and like the uh, the uh, neo funk uh, scene quite closely. That's right. Though, so I do. So Since yeah. the birth of Snarky Puppy. That's that, right. That's all what got me into that. So uh, yeah, it wouldn't be weird to think that you know this guy. Still. Yeah. So very intrigued on what someone like Ea Raman's a Ea Raman composition would do with someone like Mahini, eh, Mohini, who's so so gifted, um, and then there's also Prasanna who I'm not sure who it is, and Didi and Malargale. So let's give it a watch. She's in Berkeley, of course, so let's do a little review of this. Let's go. Get ready for... It's probably going to be very complex. Rain crazy. Straight away with it. Sagam. Nice. Oh, that's so cool. She looks cool. Dude, the way she slaps the bass is a joke. She's so talented. Goddamn. She's also fairly young. Yeah, she's not. She's a bit young here, though. Younger. <laughs> it's gonna go mad. Uh, you bet. Look, not even one single piece of paper anywhere. Hello, ginger guy. The violinist. I forget his name. He can sing, he can play the violin, he can do a bunch of stuff. She's the one slapping. You know, first, I never thought of that when I when I heard Mohini's work before. Funk. Well, no, I never thought that she would come from Indian... Well, I didn't know about Indian classical until last year. Oh, correct. You know, no, so correct. that makes so much more sense that she has an understanding of rhythm like way beyond... no one else. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my hand around Rupak, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's been like fucking three months and I'm still like, what the fuck? <laughs> I still don't sense. get it. <laughs> yeah, um... Like, I'm still trying to do those uh, exercises and those type of, like, paradiddles and stuff like that. Rudiments, yeah. On Rupak, which is really... I find it really hard. I don't know, it's just my brain is not used to that shit. Uh, but I, I, I think I could find a way to implement Rupak and Latin jazz. Ah, wow, Genuinely, okay, I, think I, I, could, I, I I mean, I've seen people do it before. Um, and it, essentially, when you think of styles, who gives a fuck? Because when you play... <laughs> You could do things from different bits and bobs from different styles. That's right, that's and right. And then it's this own thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But you kind of have to learn the foundations of each one to be able to then create your own sort of feel or rudiment or whatever you like to call it. I never like to sort of, comp you, know, you know, give it names, uh, it, which is important. But at the same time, it's like, well, at the end of the day, whatever sounds good, it's just music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but with her, obviously, her style is very fun sort of forward. Um, she's very jazzy forward and sort of, neat, yeah, that sort of neo-funk era she's from. Mm -hmm. um, but I never thought that she would come from sort of Indian classical, which is mad to me. It's fantastic, though. It's so dynamic. I don't know what her background is, actually. I never knew. I just thought she was just... Good. I don't know. I didn't even know she was from India, to be fair. I knew about her in Venezuela. Like. Woo! Thank you! 
give him so much credit for that, man. Do it again. about this is that and i think about the whole sort of berkeley environment is like they always always prioritize uh, apart, apart from complexity they always prioritize melody so it, it it opens up and i think that's why these sort of videos have done so well they sort of opened up a market uh, uh, an audience that may not know the complexity behind some of the riffs and the uh, uh, solos uh, uh, techniques that are being uh, sort of displayed um, but at least it sounds good to the ear, mm -hmm. to the untrained ear, and then it sounds even more special, I guess, to the uh, to those trained ear. Yeah. And but of, like, of course, it's like yeah, we know about music, but of, our knowledge is very limited in term, in comparison to someone like Mohini or in comparison to someone like Ar Rahman. Like, like there's a reason why there's only one Ar Rahman. You know, it's That's like because right. no one understands music the way he does, or very mm -hmm. few people on earth. Um, so it's like, but we can all. Uh, appreciate the melody yeah we, we all build relatability based on sound right we, mm -hmm. we can all converse oh how did that make you feel this was so good so i i, I like a lot of that about these sort of berkeley showcases that they never become unbearable in the sense of this is so much complex this is so complex it's lost me mm -hmm. because i am a dumbass to a certain extent <laughs> so i i like the fact that they prioritize melody sound cadence rhythm um over everything else um and they, the thing is, like, in order to to perform pieces like this, your knowledge of music and the dexterity in which you actually have to be at, mm. it's quite high. So the complexity, academical aspect of it, um, it's already there. So mm. they, the focus shifts yeah. so that the whole environment becomes about music and not about the dexterity of I, the musician. I think it also say. does a better job of igniting cur curiosity, curiosity into new genres new sounds and then mm -hmm. therefore people who may not know anything about it you know example is us you know they sort of dive a bit deeper because this was one of the first videos we ever saw you know correct Anyways. i agree <laughs> Indian classical music, I didn't know that the instruments I grew up with could sound like this. Mad, right? Okay. Right, it's <laughs> like a, different, a moment for that. It's like opening a portal to a different world. Man. It's like literally, I, how ignorant am I that I, <laughs> I couldn't even fathom the idea of instruments that I have I've been familiar with my whole life could sound like this. Yeah, well, they have access to scales that we don't, you know? What? So that, that's already, Amazing. That's already a fucking... They it's have access, incredible. Yeah, they, they, they acknowledge micronodes in a manner in which we don't. It's fantastic. It's like a freaking magic trick, bro. Especially ballet, because ballet has a better pedigree than me when it comes to, like, uh, music, um, in terms of her training. So when when ballet was exposed to it, I was also I was always younger and then, then I I didn't go the traditional mm -hmm. orthodox way of learning music because I, I went more in, in, like think about it like in South America if you're a percussionist you don't necessarily have to go or a drummer you don't have to necessarily go to school for that yeah yeah you 
yeah, I don't know. It's really bizarre how you people You kind of pick it up on the run kind of thing. And it's like they kind of throw you in the pit and yeah, they teach you and they go. It's better, it seems, the industry rewards more your ability to perform rather than your ability to... Uh, Retain knowledge. Yeah, which uh, to a certain extent it is good, but then to uh, the bad side of that is that you're quite limited. Mm-hmm. And then you in the US, to a certain extent, it's a bit like that. Obviously, some institutions have become so famous and other pathways have opened up so well. But like... The, f- the story of Phil Collins would be the story of like your your musician who well, he's he's British though yeah but I I mean in the sense like well US and UK like okay. the West the pinnacle of the West right okay. when it comes to music um it's like the you know South America US UK um obviously I don't want to exclude Europe but just to keep it simple but like the the story of Phil Collins resonated with so many musicians mm-hmm. from this the this sort of this continents because he learned academia later on in his career it's way later he learned to play by playing mm-hmm. um not by having lessons or not by learning i mean essentially he was like a fucking cleaner or some you know what i mean so he's like it, it, it was his story like he hits close to a lot of percussionists and mm-hmm. of course no one's going to be a phil collins very few people you know um because that guy i don't know his ability to, for rhythmical predisposition it was just it's just unreal he's not dead um but that's kind of how you pick it up you know you yes. don't oh you go to church i mean church or learn you you know you become sort of you, exposed to it yeah you listen way. and uh, but you don't learn how to read unless you want to and who wants to yeah, back home yeah no bad. back home yeah especially n- even even singing or guitar or piano you kind of like if you are involved in the in the world of music or if your friends are musicians, you're going to pick these things up. And you don't really know how. They just teach you on the go and then you kind of like... The funny thing you is, know? what would have happened before the 2000s, like before the internet? Because, I mean, I've, I never looked, I've never looked at a tutorial on how to play the drums, like uh, how to play right. the percussion. I've done it now in drumming Yeah. because of the internet. But in the, early, in the early 2000s, when I was learning to play the timbal, Again, congas... I- I think it just depends on who you were surrounded with, because I, I I remember like Maybe father the older, sat, yeah, sat me down right. I think like the, the the I know because my sister learned to play guitar like that, mm. like she because her friends play guitar. She was like, oh, Talk let me have it. a go, and mm. then they'd be like, oh, do this and do that, and and then later on she had been playing touring with a band. You know, like those are the things like. Oh, so and so are ill. You had a little dabble. Come to our rehearsals, type mm. of thing. I think it's is that is that environmental Fire learning, first. yeah. Can, rather than sitting you down, these are the chords. Try to play them. I'm gonna research a story, Mo- Mohinis, because I'm so intrigued. Obviously, I don't know if she came from any classical. Who knows? I, I, I didn't even know she. I, I didn't even know she lived in India. I, I have no idea. Because um, I've seen some of her videos. Like mm-hmm. she has like a YouTube channel as well. She's amazing. Um, and she speaks English fine. You know. But I think everyone in India does anyway, so... Yeah. He's a good... I, I presume he plays jazz really well. Who, the drummer? Oh, you know Lucy's? Yeah. You see? How cool is that? Everybody's having such a good time as well. Thank you. 
The transitions are so cool. <laughs> well, also, you know Everybody's what's funny. Everybody's you know having the best you know time of their so, life. I, I, I've been out with a few um, a violinists that do classical music. Uh, in the more like in the Western sense, you know, like uh, score like music for for like movies or like uh, um, That's traditional pieces, yeah, yeah. But it's actually not very fun. No, it's not. It's very regimented. It's and very tedious. tedious to a certain extent. But what they've told me, um, both of them were violinists, and what they would both tell me is like you feel sometimes sort of in incarcerated and trapped yes. in this sort of there's only one way to play mm -hmm. um and very and when you go to these concerts and stuff there is etiquette and she has to dress a specific way yes. and she has to do this and all that stuff and she has to play this way and he has to so it's like when they were talking about it they were like they they were playing jazz for the first time Ooh. and they were like wow this is so cool and you can i can and no one cares if i move and stuff and then one of them uh transitioned from the violin and then she moved on to the uh, guitar, right? Ah. Uh, and then she was like, what the fuck? This is Look so Look at cool. all I can do! <laughs> yeah, yeah. She had like, obviously a good musical understanding, uh, but it's a new brand new instrument, so she's an amateur there. But she was just saying that so to see these violinists and these cello players and stuff have so much fun, uh, and the composition also ignites that type of stuff. Yes. Because this isn't a, you know, a Mozart composition. It's an A.R. Roman composition, you know? And, and that guy is crazy. And dude. he prioritizes a lot of the rhythmicality aspect of things. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of his compositions are driven by the rhythmicality, the natural cadence. I wonder what he thinks of what first. What he wants to do. I genuinely wonder what he thinks uh, of yeah, first. Yeah, me too. Me too. Because I have no idea. But I do think he could be... Odd some percussion first. No. no, doubt it. I think maybe perhaps he's more of like a melody leaning right. kind of guy. And then to add extra spice comes in the rhythmicality things that of it. Yeah. I, and that's, that's how my what brain would process background? it. No idea, bro. Literally have zero clues. Yeah, we've never done a podcast on a specific, just Composer. one individual. Yeah. Like, not if, you know, when, like from Korean podcast, we've done like bands. Yes. But we've never done like one person. Like a soloist. Yeah, we've never done be, one composer. To be completely honest, I think if, if anyone would deserve a podcast, definitely be AR. The problem is copyright. <laughs> yeah, because it's with Sony. Yeah. I mean, we could plan it up ahead, get in we touch could, with a bunch could. of fucking people, and then be able to check it out. God knows. It's a Bansuri. Oh, there we go. I don't know what that is. That is so cool, bro. Sana, you are boss. Uh, senor, you are the boss. Woo! Yeah. Wow, what the hell? Oh, by the way, these two tracks are. Can you the can you search up Mohini? How old she is? Yes, yes, of course. Do -do -do -do. I can. Mohini, you know that was because actually... I think she was like probably there. She's really young, man. I don't think she yeah. passes twenty six. I don't really know. Yeah, she she's twenty six. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, really... I remember because when I when I uh, knew of her, she was a kid. Look. 26? She's really, I mean, not a kid, but you know, like 20 well, years old. No, but the, I remember when we were first introduced to her work, she, yeah, I think she was like, oh, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Uh, I think she was like 16 or something, maybe even younger. Yeah. Well, we it does say there, it does say she was videos. a prodigy given performances since the age of 11. There you go. Um, yeah, I remember being like, oh my god, that's like a child. That's... She's also been in the Coke studio, I wonder where. Uh, maybe. Day is the daughter of Sujo Rey, uh, Day, that's right. Also a bass guitarist. Um, well, maybe there you have it. Maybe she performed with AR in the, in the cheap she's place 2014. for AR. 
Wow, okay. bro, what a freaking cool thing. Mind She's it. awesome. Well, let us know what you guys thought about it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed, you know, obviously these type of videos are probably a bit longer, a bit more in depth. They ignite a lot of thoughts. Uh, but let us know what you guys thought about it. And uh, perhaps what else should we check out next? Okay, goodbye.